Honestly, it has been very beautiful. It has left for me the border should be, border should be permanently closed. Because um, days, months, years, we've been having this problem of we farm, we harvest, our produce are not sold. Because of what? There are a lot of things that are coming in, for example, the rice, the, the, the frozen chicken and all that. And since they closed the border, we have been able to see how we can interstate do marketing within our own states that is buying from one state to the other. You know, people say we don't have enough rice in Nigeria, but the rice we have in Nigeria can feed the whole of Nigeria. It's a matter of trying to see how you can be able to just provide machineries for small scale older farmers. When I talk about machinery, I'm talking about processing units that after they harvest from the farm, they don't have to wait for the government's processing unit for them to go and process. Let them, let them have a cottage processing scheme, uh, machines where they can process themselves. The stone, because we're also having a problem with the stoning and sorting. Those are the things that we need as a cottage farmer so that we can be able to do this so that when we now get our rice in the bags, it will be as if it is a foreign, it's foreign rice. But if we don't do this, that is when we start saying that the rice has tools. But to me, I have all those things. The milling machine, the sorting and all that. So what I now do is that I try to collaborate with one of our state farmers that is from Kano State. What she does is that I buy rice from her, bring the rice to Lagos State, process it and package it. And it's like it's foreign rice. I have bought more than a trillion load of rice from her just within a month, which has never happened since 15 years I've been a farmer. I have not tried to even do long grain farm because I'm into long grain and short grain. But because of the long grain rice that they bring into, the, into Nigeria, we cannot sell that because it's so expensive. So now we've been able to, to, to see how we can do interstate marketing. We are by trying to buy up from another state that is producing more to now market to people that need the rice. So it's been so wonderful. So rest for me, the border should be permanently closed for farmers. You know, you know, the thing is that there is always there is always a fluctuation of price. Now, in December, you know fully well that everything goes up. And this is not harvest season. This is not harvest season. It's just like it's just like it's just like saying that yes, when we produce, when we farm, when we when we produce, you understand, the price goes down because of we are looking for farmers to buy, we are looking for people to buy. But now we don't have the rice now to like go around, and that is why the price is so high. But as at by next year, by February, March, the rice, the prices will stabilize because now we now know that yes, we have people that want to buy off our goods. So when we now want to harvest, we know that yes, we are harvesting to sell at this price. The price will come down. It's just like beans. When we are investing beans, the price comes down. And after some time, some people store the beans. After some time, the beans they have got for eighteen thousand naira when you are investing, or 14,000, can go up to 40 something thousand. That's what is happening in rice. So we're going to stabilize the price with time. But just that, the most important thing that we are begging, we are saying is that the small scale older farmers should be equipped with machines so that we can be able to process our rice. You have been at the middle of the road. So what's your I have observed that there is good accountability process within the group which is what Action Aid also stands for. Um, I've observed also that they are proud of their leadership, which is why they re-elected the majority of those who are in the previous executive have also been re-elected to continue for another tenure of three years. We are proud that a small organization that we started off in Action Aid based on the Public Financing for Agriculture project has grown to a membership of 5,000 women farmers across the country. And we are glad that they are they are beginning to get structured. They are also getting funding from other donors because we have helped them to set up their systems and structures within their own organization. So it's, it's a plus for Action Aid, and this is a great product of building the capacity of a smaller group of a movement to becoming an organization that can stand on their own. Okay, so 
our advice to them as Action Aid is to continue to engage the government to make sure that they, they have all the products, they have the funding, they have the resources to continue to produce food for the nation. We also advise them to continue to be accountable in their leadership process and also make sure that it's participatory across the nation because the executive is national, but they also have smaller bodies within the state. So we encourage them to interact. We encourage them to also make sure that the lines of accountability to the national executive is followed so that it can be a sustainable organization. One thing is to I just finished saying to them inside there, my company is Nigeria Agricultural Insurance Company. It's a fully owned uh, company of the federal government of Nigeria. We've been set up for such a purpose like this. In fact, we have a lot of um, our focus going through towards the small holder farmers like um, the ones in the hall today. And we said to them that the rates we offer them are fully subsidized, subsidized by the federal government. What that means is that whatever amount that has been calculated for them as the insurance premium to pay, half of it is already paid by the government. Most of them don't know about this insurance. We try to reach out, we organize sensitization um, programs so that we can come together like this to explain to them the benefits of it. NIAC is set up to plow the farmer back into business, whatever happens to the farmer. And the premium, whatever you pay for this, is really just a very small, um, a small amount of what the entire cost of um, the farm is. So uh, it's Every time we try to reach out and just, you know, make them aware that they should key into this. Past years, uh, our experience have been a lot of challenges and actually having access to, you know, getting in touch with whoever is planning for the farming, which is our duty bearers, you know, and we've been able to very create a very clear, you know, synergy and relationship with them to sit down to talk to them on the policy makers on the need for them to increase allocation of budget for the agri sector and also to clear our challenges as women having access and control of land and that is what we use for farming. Okay, Ac actually for now we've been able to create a linkage with them engaging and they have actually been responding and we are trickling the effect down to the state level and local government but we are still pushing, we are not yet there. Thank you, so thank you very sorry, much. In terms of assessing um, insurance, to what extent are you doing? I mean, are, are, are uh, our capacity is being built to train our women on what is the importance of, insur of insurance. That is what we are doing now. And by the grace of God, the women will key into insurance because it's very, very important. If you lose your investment in farming by flood or, or drug, you come back to square one, which is what we are fighting for now. Obviously, you might say we are not seeing farms anywhere. I don't know if that's totally correct, but I know that there are factors that are contributing to the reduction of farmlands. Part of it is that of climate change. In terms of flooding, flooding has swept away farms, farmlands over the years. We have desertification in the Sahel and upper northern region. We also have the issues of insecurity in the Middle Belt and in different parts of Nigeria. This has made women farmers and farmers run away from their farm. It has made them abandon their farms. And apart from that, there's also issues of fluctuating weather conditions and changing rain patterns. These are some of the factors that are contributing to the reduction on, of the availability of farmlands. Let's not go into land grabbing and the other issues around the availability of land for farming. So, so, so thank you, Mokodi. What are some of your success stories? If I have to start with the different successes we've had so far, we will not be able to live here today. But I will mention most of the recent achievements that we have had so far. First of all, we were part of the stakeholders that contributed to our national gender policy launched by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. We couldn't have brought out that policy document without part of our policy briefs and statements 
and recommendations that we brought to the body in terms of gender-friendly equipment, in terms of trying to galvanize access to land for women farmers, and proper application and farming mechanisms, better strengthening farming practices that will help smallholder women farmers. We all um, increase and improve their own farming, but also to really to really change the policies um, that, that will make life better for women farmers in this country. And they're really seeing very strong results. So I just feel very, very inspired to, to hear from them and to really learn from them about their approaches and, and what works in Nigeria. So did you go to any of their farms? Uh, I haven't been to their farms, actually, but I did visit um, a community in Badagri that actually Nigeria works with in their community sponsorship program. And I met some very strong women there who said that with the support of Action Aid Nigeria, their, their income has, um, has increased. They've been through women's rights training programs. They've set up small businesses.